James Kaufman, World News Report today, October 30th, 2025. Ladies and gentlemen, we are in a solar storm currently and have been. These are our KP indexes. Gives you a combination of our solar winds and plasma striking Earth in different areas. Take a look at our Boulder KP index. We've seen nine hours of a G1 geomagnetic storm and three hours of a geomagnetic disturbance. Take a look at our Fredericksburg KP index. We have seen what looks like 12 hours of a geomagnetic disturbance and three hours of a geomagnetic storm. Looking at our estimated planetary index, the index that NASA and NOAA has recently updated, the one they exclusively use. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're looking at 12 hours of a geomagnetic storm and six hours of a geomagnetic disturbance. I think we may be out of this for a bit with the next shooter drop here in a few moments. Taking a look at our college index, always the most sensitive. Well, today we've been in a G2 and G3 geomagnetic storm, according to it. We start the day out in a geomagnetic disturbance. After nine hours of a geomagnetic storm yesterday, we've had nine hours of a G2 geomagnetic storm today and three hours of a G3 geomagnetic storm. If we go by our college index, taking a closer look at our estimated planetary KP index exclusively used by NASA and NOAA, we see 12 hours of a G1 geomagnetic storm and six hours of a geomagnetic disturbance. And it looks like that next shoe dropped. It did take us out of a disturbance or a storm for the time being. This is all being caused by that earth facing coronal hole and the coronal winds that sped out of it because it was missing the canopy of our sun. Meanwhile, NASA and the Jet Propulsion Laboratory totally blew it today. They missed this huge rock, 2025 UF9. UF9, it went between the moon and Earth. It was 140 feet in diameter, give or take. It was moving at 20 kilometers a second. And look at the inclination. Probably missed it because it was coming up from the south. But ladies and gentlemen, this would have been a country killer. This was a huge rock with a huge inclination moving at a very fast 20 kilometers plus per second. 2025 UF9, what a blow. They totally blew it. Let's watch. When they released the data, they released it today after it passed. All right, here, here it says they first spotted this thing on the 28th. The last observation used was on the 29th. Why not release the information then? 74 observations. And they released the data today just before it passed between Earth and the Moon. They must have thought it was going to impact. It did have a condition code of 6, which is kind of in the middle. 9 being they have no idea how big it is or where it's going. 0 meaning they know exactly how large it is and exactly where it's going. Well, 6 is much closer to 9 than to 0. And taking a look at our GOES X-ray flux. It is a quiet day and has been. We're running a B baseline, a weak B baseline. May I add a B 3.67? Uh, it's been a long time since I remember our sun like this. That means it might be getting ready to explode. The quiet before the storm. The last M flare we've seen, well, was not within even the last seven days. We've been running a B baseline for the last seven days. This is something very strange, especially based on where we are in the solar system 
i.e. the planetary lineups, etc. And, ladies and gentlemen, ba based on, well, where we are in the solar cycle itself, which is we're at the top of the solar cycle, supposedly, if NOAA and NASA are correct in their predictions. All right, this is the very first time I've ever reported anything like this. The maximum flare over the last 72 hours was a C1.66. The maximum flare over the last 24 hours was a C1.43. No events occurred today. A 1% chance of an X-class solar flare. A 5% chance of an M-class solar flare. And only a 50% chance of a C-class solar flare? This is unbelievable. It looks like we did get a small pop C there at the end. This is the big flare, the C1.25. Unbelievable. All right, over to HMI Intensigram. We have seven sunspots earth facing. Several of them are going around the far limb as we speak. Uh, all of them are simple. as seen that they're green. It looks like 4267 is becoming more complex and is, well, basically earth facing. We have some main ones coming around the backside, but we have no way of seeing those because, well, Europe won't share their data with us. That's the truth. Over to GOES 19 Solar Ultraviolet Imager, we can see that coral hole. This may be the end of it, but it looks like it might have, well, some more to expel towards Earth. When the canopy is missing like that, it looks like a black hole, and the solar winds that are released are much stronger than your average solar winds. This is the sunspot that I just talked about right here. It's the most active thing on the sun, but it's not that active, is it? It was responsible for that C1.25 solar flare that just popped off. That was a scary one. All right, over to Lasco C3, the back side of our star has been horrific. And you know, what's strange is we're in between all the gas giants and the star itself. Nothing is really on the backside to cause this. Maybe the comet flyby, but we're seeing huge flares. They believe that they're coming out of the old sunspot 2246. It gave us so much heck. It's still together. They believe it's coming around the limb this weekend. It will still be together. It's very complex, although they won't show us the data. I know they have it based on where the satellites are located. Uh, they think that it is, well, has been popping off X flares on the backside. Wait until it's Earth facing with the gas giants behind us. All right, over to NOAA's Space Weather Prediction Center. Today is the 30th. Where they have far as plasma, it looks like one to two centimeters in plasma all day long. Solar winds on the 30th, they have them starting the day at around 575, just under 600, and ending the day at about the same. It looks like, based on the KP index, that's, well, come down some. Let's say from 590 to 575. Let's see how they did. They also have solar winds continuing based on that coral hole for another two days, 48 hours. And I did wonder why we would have not seen, well, continuing geomagnetic disturbances and or storms. We got that KP3 index bar that just dropped, taking us out of any type of disturbance or storm. All right, over to our D-Region Absorption Prediction Center. Obviously, we're still getting a little radiation hitting the planet at all times. I'll show you that C1.25 here any moment now. It was a big one, so hold on. I hope I don't miss it. I, I guess we saw it. All 
Was that it, folks? That must have been it. Over the Pacific. What a bad boy that thing was. All right, over to our real-time solar wind discover satellite. See that our shields are down or suddenly facing here in pink. We have plasma at least double what they guesstimated. They guesstimated it would be about one or two centimeters. I see it all over the board up to about five centimeters. Uh, taking a look at solar winds, they said that they would start the day here at 590. They started at 500. They have worked their way up. Here is a 575 print, and they're continuing to climb. I don't know why we just fell out of a geomagnetic disturbance or storm if these winds possibly shook us up all day long with no plasma. Why are these winds bringing in a KP3 index bar? Look at this. No sense whatsoever. How does... 500 kilometer per second solar winds bring in a G1 geomagnetic disturbance if 675, 77 kilometers per second, 74 kilometers per second is a KP3, not even a geomagnetic disturbance. Something's very wrong. I would look for another uptick in the KP index that next bar that dropped has been a mistake and like always we'll jump over to ace to check our work shields are down they try to get up uh plasma has stayed in or around four with just a couple of well strange readings here about four or five centimeters cubed, about twice what they thought it would be. So the wind started at 475 instead of 575. And they have risen to, as we saw, uh, over 700 kilometers per second. And we see the temperature rising as that solar wind heats up. The strange thing is, is that last KP index bar that dropped was a KP3, not even close to a disturbance. Again, I expect that to turn around uh, when they drop their next bar here in an hour or two. Now, I would show y'all the backside of our sun or the composite thereof, but they say that they can't show us the information because the government's closed. Why not? It's our satellite. It's our money. We don't need your interpretation whatsoever let us see our composite down here this is from a, <laughs> believe it or not uh what is this september 11th september 11th and they haven't updated anything anything what a total joke then you move to the same satellite sto and they've updated it with a picture from today at 2100 UTC time. A picture they just took. There's the sunspot that we've all been talking about. I can't really see the coronal hole here. SDO. The same thing that they would have given us the backside composite from has been updated here. Are they working? Are they closed? Are they open? And let's all remember, Soho has... A satellite, or the Europeans have a satellite on the back side of the sun currently, but guess what? You sure won't be seeing it. This is from today. Soho, it's a European satellite. You can see it was taken today at 106, so 806 last night. There's the coral hole we're dealing with. There's the sunspot we're dealing with here. And here is one of the new sunspot groups coming around. Probably not. 2246 but it's on its way they're expecting it very shortly the solar winds look somewhat normal i would expect more of a bow shock with solar winds above 700 kilometers per second but we're not seeing the bow shock that we usually would I wanted to point that out because it is more than rather weird 
All right, over to the EESA, European Space Agency's Euphoria. They have us getting hit by a huge plasma on the 28th. I don't know where that came from. We sure didn't see it from the, any of the American space agencies or any other space agency. And then what do they have for solar winds? They have solar winds today starting at about 425 and staying about 425. Let's see if they really drop off. Let's see. And the 30th, 425, and they stayed at about 425. So they totally blew both of those. I have no idea where they're getting their information from. I really don't, ladies and gentlemen. Very, very strange indeed. All right, finally, taking a look at the planets today on the 30th here. Earth has geomagnetic connections to Uranus, Sirius, Eris, Neptune, Saturn. We have the moon off to the side here. Everything's about to start lining up. We'll see what the seventh looks like. A pretty decent lineup on the sixth and seventh. Uh, Any time between now and the sixth and the seventh, we do have those gas giants behind us here. So I would expect even even in just a few days on the 3rd, we could start seeing activity, especially if that complex sunspot makes its way around. So any time with these gas giants behind us and the moon behind us here, as it is, it's go time. Most importantly, that runs us up to about the 7th, but most importantly, when we run through and we go to grab a geomagnetic connection to Mercury and Jupiter and Uranus and Eris and Ceres and Saturn and Neptune. We are geomatic, um, geomatically connected to everything. Excuse me. And when we hit the 19th, the moon gets right there in line with this and it almost forms, well, it forms a shape that's going to be something to remember. Venus is almost perfectly offset on the other side. 19th, the 20th with the moon here, and the 21st, three days to remember for sure, ladies and gentlemen. 19th, 20th, 21st, and probably uh, the next few days as well through the 7th. So with all those gas giants behind us, and complex sunspots we can actually have an event any day i'm just pointing to some of the days that we should have an uptick in earthquake volcanic and solar activity with that said the big day would be this day the 21st or the 20th god bless you guys please share our video make sure that you did give us a thumbs up we put a lot of work into our our product here and we hope you enjoy it and make sure you're subscribed if you haven't and always remember that anything's possible bizarro world god bless you all